Blood tour was like almost at an end. Mm -hmm. How do you feel the fans are reacting to the new songs in the live setting? It's been great. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think, <clears throat> you know, it took maybe a couple shows to really kind of get usually into, does. into the swing of things. Um, but then once we were playing the songs competently, um, I think then I relaxed and actually see what the crowd's yeah. doing. And, um, and they seem to be very, um, very reactive to the new stuff. Yeah. There's always a learning curve that we have to go through. Um, and, and with this record more than more than ever because we uh, I mean obviously we rehearsed for the tour but you know we don't always know which songs we're going to play and so mm -hmm. it seemed like by the time we got comfortable with one we were sort of introducing another and it's we've kind of figured out what we enjoy playing the most but um, we're still kind of trying to get that muscle memory in okay. place but you know I guess to answer your question like every step of the way mm -hmm. the fans seem to seem to be into what we were doing so cool to kind of follow up on that you guys were doing the um uh download code giveaway for people who buy a ticket so they receive the album on release day yeah do yeah. you think that has affected how well the fans know the newer material um for the first leg of the tour possibly i mean it seems like these days bands like the record is available you know if it's not a couple free downloads and a couple streaming you know mm -hmm. um even before the whole thing just leaks kind of illegally. Yeah. It seems like people are familiar with the record. There's opportunities to hear the record before it's released. Yeah. Um, I, I, you know, I like to think that people take the opportunity to hear it as soon as they can. So, mm -hmm. um, Yeah, it's a, w a lot different from the way things used to be where you had to give them a couple weeks to kind of get familiar with the record before you started seeing yeah. people singing along. Right. Now it takes us a couple weeks to... Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and then um, as well as the new songs, you guys have been playing a lot of older songs from the back catalogue, and some of them that some of the members have stated that probably would never be played or couldn't be played. Um, yeah. Yeah. So w what inspired that kind of to throw those new older songs into the mix? I don't know. I, I can tell you. I think. Okay. I mean, I think that. Um, we got into a habit of playing songs that we liked playing that were also songs that we thought the audiences would like to hear. Um, and then over time, I feel like we sort of painted ourselves into a corner a bit, um, still trying to serve the purpose of uh, entertaining ourselves and entertaining the audiences. But then over the years, we ended up doing very similar set lists, from, even from tour to tour. Um, and then I think just just trying to step outside of that or just experimenting a little bit and stepping outside of that um, it turns out it was rewarding for us and the audiences everybody seemed to like us kind of pulling stuff out of the bag and, and uh, mixing it up and so that sort of validated that concept and then we've just continued to go with it yeah you know one thing that I'd like to just say to the world that you know when we do a support tour or when we do um, a radio show you know, we're playing in front of a lot of people that have never seen us or maybe have never even heard of us, so we have to kind of play the songs that uh, people may have heard, you know. But when we do these shows, we, we can safely assume that everybody's here because they want to be, and they're somewhat familiar with the band, so that's, you know, we can kind of branch out a little bit. And, and like Hunter was saying, we started playing a couple rarities, and, and it not only was exciting for the fans but it was really fun for us to kind of yeah. be out of our element I don't know how many times on this tour I've been playing a song and like not known what I was doing and it's kind of fun yeah. it's like it's a challenge to see if I can hang on and, and pull through it so. I mean, that's, there's something to be said about us for years and years playing a lot of the same songs and often the same sets or at least um, blocks within the set list is you get a flow and you get it down you know what you're going to play next and so you can do it without thinking and it gets really tight not, not just the songs, but just the gaps between the songs, and we don't have any of that right now. <laughs> but it's nice because we're, you know, uh, we're playing these songs and they're not robotic. Like we're able to actually look at the set list and go, like, like you know, right before we're about to play a song, go, oh, we're playing that song, and then yeah, be like, yeah. this is cool. Like, and actually be yeah. able to put some creativity and some emotion behind it. Yeah. Do you find that when songs are placed at a different point in the set? Uh, there's a different kind of energy, like because yes. on previous murder tours you would always murder. close with Miss Murder, but yeah. you've opened with Miss Murder on a few yeah. shows. So. I mean, that's it's it's really interesting. Like 
when we play Miss Murder last, it, I can do it without thinking, and it just it feels right. When we play it first, it's like you know you're going on stage with a certain level of adrenaline, and the song feels completely different. So yeah. um, it's interesting. It's been an interesting study to kind of see how that yeah. that works. Any song that we start with, I, mentally I'm thinking, okay. I gotta get some energy out. I gotta kind of get into the flow of the set. That set my set my, the pace for myself. Mm -hmm. And um, and so if it's a, a technical song, it's harder for me to do the technical things and also like run around. Yeah. Um, but at the end of the set, I'm just using the last little bit of energy that I have. And so if it's a song like Miss Murder, where you know I, I have to do a lot of haze, or if it's a song where it requires a lot of singing, then it's relax a little bit and pace myself differently but so yeah it's the, the placement within the set is totally changes what how it feels and, and I'm sure what we do yeah and so with all the different intros I think you've opened with like four or five different songs this tour um, including Strength Through Wounding which hadn't been a regular song for years yeah. like you guys played it Halloween once a couple years ago but yeah. Yeah. aside from that I think the last time was 2000 or so yeah. um, do you think that you'll ever have a want to um, play Prelude 1221 and Miseria Cantare again. We played the first bar, or first two bars of uh, Keeping Out of Direct Sunlight, yeah. but I don't oh. think anybody noticed. Yeah. <laughs> we you barely remember, noticed. Yeah, do we you remember did. which show that was at? Uh, I don't know, but we did the, like, the I, have, I can tell you. It's in my, it's in then, my show notes, I know. And like, then we went into <laughs> um, Taste of Phoenix. Yeah. So it's whatever whatever show we open with Days of Phoenix. I think that was a little more sweet or two. Yeah. Yeah. And it didn't and nobody noticed and all it did was kind of screw me up. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, um, I don't know. Like I I won't say no because I didn't think we'd play a lot of the songs we played on this tour, so Yeah. Yeah, yeah I remember the first time I interviewed you guys back in 2010, I asked if you'd ever played Keyline Pine, and I was like, no, and like two days later you played it. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> Somebody showed you a tattoo of, of like, uh, oh, a fucking right. tattoo. Oh, right. Yeah, right. And I know so, that guy, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so we kind of felt like ob obligated. <laughs> yeah. I just thought it was so funny. I'm like, I said they were going to do it. Yeah. And then they yeah. did it the next day. <laughs> yeah. It's, it, that's why it pays to not ever say you won't do something. Yeah. I mean, I yeah. thought we would never play The Great Disappointment. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, when, when, like the 10 year mark happened and we hadn't ever played it after we recorded it not even once yeah I figured that that's it that song's in in its grave like so and now we've been playing it so yeah it's a super ambitious song and it's really fun to play and I think we stayed away from it because we thought it'd be too challenging but so, no 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 yeah so did Jay just like come up to you one day and was like hey let's play this and yeah pretty much I mean I think Jade had had the conversation with Dave. Okay. I mean, because ultimately it comes down to what Dave wants to sing, and he's approaching it always from a, a strength of his voice and a health issue and a sustainability issue. Like he's got to sing every night, mm -hmm. and that's and that's the most important thing. And if he if his voice isn't feeling sharp, or if he's worried about you know getting sick, or you know, so and Jade and I also had conversations about. Um, we kind of went through all the different songs that we hadn't played or never played and discussed which of them we could maybe attempt in a different key to be easier to sing or different things and I think that opened up a lot of possibilities for songs as well so yeah not to mention that he's just like 17 times the stronger singer like he's just really in the last I mean he's always been a great singer but like just strength wise I'm really impressed with the way he sings. So. Did that end up happening with any of the key changes? We've done a couple, yeah. Okay. Nothing too drastic. I think the most we've done is we've had to transpose stuff like... You're giving away all our secrets. I know. <laughs> it's like a whole step away, which I think is the biggest difference. We're just doing it note for note. Yeah. Accurately, just complete representations of the songs. Okay. No cheating. I mean, it's not cheating. It's, you know, that happens all the time. And so you're actually transposing it rather than just playing a we, full step down? We do both. We have, I mean, we have guitars that are tuned down, half step, and we have songs that we've transposed to different keys, and just anything to still represent the song mm -hmm. within reason. Like, we're not going to change something so drastically that it doesn't even sound like the, right. the song anymore. But um, 
but it's stuff that keeps it in the song's world, but still allows us to deliver it and, and do it justice. Okay. I guess this is like kind of on that topic, but um, we're wondering if you guys have noticed um, similarities in some of the new songs in the previous AFI albums, like um, like we've been talking about. Um, White Offerings um, has almost like oh, Black right. Sails, like the opening. Yeah. Um, obviously, we know that you aren't like, the main songwriters like initially, but um, uh, So Beneath You has like it almost reminds of um, advances in modern technology. Oh, okay. Like the kind right. of guitar tone yeah. um, in the intro. Yeah. Like, and like the strumming pattern too. You know? yeah. yeah. I mean, I think like you could do the same exercise with like Green Day I think that there's certain chords that are pleasing mm -hmm. in certain sequences and that happens all through through rock you know um, and so I think at this point yeah maybe every once in a while we kind of repeat patterns it's never an intentional thing um, and hopefully the songs themselves differentiate themselves on their own but yeah you know it's like yeah. Sometimes you know we don't even yeah. realize it until after I mean, you the fact. Get but four of us doing the things that we are do comfortably, and and uh, it's gonna sound like us. Yeah. <laughs> However, Mark wrote advances in modern technology, right? Yeah. And Jade yeah. wrote uh, so beneath you. Yeah. So right. why should Jade have to hold on, off on doing that chord combination that's so pleasing? Yeah. yeah, so it's like there's just different, and that's just the very beginning. Yeah, as well, it was also, so. it was also yeah. more like the guitar tone was very yeah. proud of you esque, so that was kind of cool to hear that throwback. Yeah. I think what caught me off guard was I was just listening like, wow, they're actually, you know, AFI's a band that always goes forward, and you guys are still doing that, but also it felt almost like you were throwing in a little tidbit of the older music to uh -huh. maybe keep fans in. We weren't sure if that was intentional. Maybe we no. went forward and forward and forward and forward and we kind of came back around a little bit. Yeah, kind of yeah. like, like David Bowie just kept doing his own thing and then his thing became really popular again and so he was kind of copying himself doing, but it was all just very organic. It was just like, it just sort of came around for him. Maybe we're like David Bowie. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> That's the takeaway from this. Well, I'm sure Billy wouldn't mind that comparison. I so. think he might. Yeah. <laughs> we'll never know. So. Yeah. So we'll just go with it. He's fine with it. Okay. Um, the, another thing we've noticed is that a lot of the, the dates on this tour have had multiple encores, which is something that uh, on previous tours was super rare. Um, and so it seems like most of them are unplanned because they're not on the set list or anything like that. Mm -hmm. And we were just wondering what inspires you to do that in the cities that you do do that at. It's... Okay, so let me, don't take this the wrong way, anybody that hears this, like, we don't want to do a second encore. I mean, essentially, we play all the songs that we want to play, mm -hmm. and then there, early on in the tour, there were a couple cities where the crowd just wouldn't leave. Yeah. And, like, the lights went up, and the music, house music came on, and the crowd wouldn't leave, and they're still chanting, and we're just like, okay. And they were great. I mean, don't get me wrong, these are, like, amazing crowds. The shows felt great, and we're just like, let's do another. Let's, yeah. give, them, let's give them another one. Yeah. But then we kept doing it, and it seemed like that was something that we were, I don't know, was a little more contrived, which it wasn't. Yeah. We never knew what we were doing. Yeah. Uh, so um, at some point, we had to st sort of stop that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, an encore, if you really think about it, a planned encore is, is kind of cheesy. Like, an encore is, is what a band should do if the crowd won't leave and, and is demanding more. Mm -hmm. You know, it's kind of given that we'll do one, so we kind of have it built into the set. To plan for a second one is even worse. It's like, well, yeah. why don't you just make your set longer then if you want to play those songs? And like Hunter said, every once in a while, they just don't let us leave, and that's mm -hmm. that's great. I mean, I've I've been to shows where I've demanded the same thing, you know, the second encore, and they come back, and it's, it's great. Yeah. But you just don't want to plan for that. We played in Poland that one time, and we had three encores, right? Yeah. Jade was like yeah. on the bus, mm -hmm. and he had his like clothes <laughs> off, and he had to put his pants back on, and, and we had to really figure out like what can we even play? Like what do we even know how to play? Yeah, I believe you played Bones over there. Yeah, we did. Yeah. We did. I think I was a little close to that set list <laughs> way back yeah. when. Yeah, because um, that was the Crash Love mm -hmm. European. Yeah, that show was Because I saw you guys on that tour in the UK. Okay. And you played Bones Nowhere, Birmingham. That was where I saw you guys. So, really? Um, for sure, I wasn't expecting. Yeah. Huh. 
I know you wanted to ask about the Deftones part because you're a huge Deftones fan. Yeah, I'm also a huge Deftones fan. So cool. yeah, obviously that's a huge show for you guys and like yeah. the venues, um, like Alexandra Palace Ali in Pally. the UK. Yeah, um, they're like pro probably like the biggest venues you played in the UK. Um, did we play? We played Wembley. Arena. Yeah, we played Wembley with uh, Offspring in like oh, really? '97 or something '98. That's before my time. Yeah. yeah. I missed a long time. That goes for all three of us. Yeah. Uh, but yes, that's that's a big venue. And is that because of your um, management? You have some... I mean, I'm sure it didn't, didn't hurt. Uh, you know, we haven't been to the UK in a long time. We'd like to go and play in front of as many people as possible. So um, but that just worked out, like, timing-wise. You know, hopefully we do this, and then we're also playing the Download Festival... But hopefully at some point we come back and do our, our own. We, we used to go to the UK and play like eight shows yeah. and play everywhere. You know, play yeah, I think it was only um, burials that um, yeah. missed out on. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, but for Crash Love and I think also for, definitely for Crash Love, we, we would go, we just played London and Glasgow. You know, we used to do Bristol and we used to do um, Brighton mm -hmm. all over the place. Yeah. And I, I miss doing that, but it's, you know, it's always a, scheduling issue and, and yeah. making the tour pay for itself because it's expensive to get 12 people over there and, um, mm -hmm. so anyway I'm excited that we're going back so uh, yeah especially down, download your own main stage as well so yeah right yeah. Um, but you know Deftones are great and so I'm, I'm a fan and I want to be at those shows so mm -hmm. the fact that we get to support them is really cool alright well unfortunately it's about out of time oh, well, yeah, I mean if you don't we'll go until Smith Okay. <laughs> I was going to give him a break since his collarbone. But, um, okay. <laughs> um, uh, in that case, then, I guess we're just talking about the larger venues that you're playing, Deftones. Um, a lot of the venues this time around on the, um, the Blood Tour were even smaller than what you guys played for burials, and they sold out even faster. Was that something you did intentionally just to have intimate shows, or how did that end up working out for you guys? Because I know you're playing three nights here, but right. other cities even still only did one night. Right. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it's always a combination of things, I think, like uh, venue availability right. is a huge issue. And then I think um, it's always better to play a smaller place and just sell it out super fast <laughs> than to play a, a big place and, like, eh, maybe it's selling and then eventually sell half the tickets or whatever. Yeah, look at the Crash Love Tour where that happened a lot. Yeah, so, you know, we'd much rather play to a packed house. <laughs> yeah. But you never know. You never know how fast a, a venue's going to sell out. Yeah. So you just sort of throw it out and see what happens. Yeah. You know, and so then next time we go on tour, we'll kind of use this tour to inform what rooms we play, but you never, like Hunter said, you never know until it goes on sale. So is there a specific reason like San Diego having three shows as and um, LA has two shows as well yeah um, well I mean is there a 3,000 seat venue in San Diego these days or is it um, just Soma no so, so I don't know if Soma still exists but that's 4,000 and that's probably too big um, if there was a perfectly sized venue so we could do one show we might consider that but maybe that show it's, there's also like the different promoters and, and who we are currently working with doing shows in different areas so um, I think someone moved just the last time you guys played it which was like 15 years ago um, it's moved like 15 times in like 15 yeah. years <laughs> but, but yeah they're in like a strip mall now and okay. they have two different rooms mm -hmm. um, I don't know the capacity by the one though yeah and it could be you know we've, we've we have never played here and it seemed like a good size room and so maybe we planned to do two and they just blew out so fast we're like well we can add a third yeah um yeah, I mean, this place, obviously, it's been around since, I think, 1928 or something, but sure. as the observatory is pretty new, I think it's been here for two years or so. Right, yeah. right. Um, so last time you guys toured, there was nothing except for House of Blues. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, if we were playing House of Blues... You would have to do five, probably. Show, probably. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if we would have, you know, sort of posted up here for a week playing, you know, mm -hmm. but this venue seems kind of cool. I sound like I was talking shit about House of Blues. Yeah, I'm really I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not. It's just the. You know. Yeah. Well, it's smaller than this, so you have to do more shows. Yeah, exactly. Though. We would have been here all week. <laughs> I don't think we would have seen too many complaints about that. Yeah. <laughs> Although, I know you guys probably would have run out of vacation time. Yeah. Right. Um, uh, 
one other thing we wanted to ask you about is um, the Weather Tone Project. Uh, Jan, one of the biggest AFI fans out there, she put together the books for you guys and yeah. things and all that stuff for the 25th uh, year anniversary. Um, and so we just wanted to ask if there's anything that stood out in those books for you guys or um, yeah, any part of the whole experience of receiving those. Yeah, full disclosure, I haven't received mine yet. Oh, no. yeah. I live I live in the Bay Area. I haven't either. And, and so. so they were sent to our management. <laughs> yeah. And then I saw Davey and Jade like tweeting or, or Instagramming or something. Yeah. Them opening these books and like how cool it was. And I was kind of like, hey, man, I want to I want to see what that is. And so I didn't, <laughs> I didn't quite know what it was. Yeah. And then I slowly pieced it together and realized that mine is probably still sitting at the management. We started this tour in L.A. and I, it wasn't brought to me. But now I know that when I get there in a couple of days, I'm going to. Yeah. check it out but I, I've seen a teaser I've seen photos mm-hmm. of what it looks like and it comes with a really cool ring that I, they made I saw, yeah I saw those photos but yeah, yeah, rough, um, yeah. Rusty made those yeah rad yeah. I thought it was just one book delivered to the band and so I'm like oh cool I need to ask David to see that <laughs> you know figure out who ended up with it and now I've realized that they've there's four versions. Well, I hope I didn't uh, spoil the surprise. No, no, no. I mean, you know, it's, it's like, but... Yeah, I forgot about that. So I don't want to appear ungrateful because that I haven't, like, said anything about that, but I'm still waiting yeah. to... I okay. live in L.A. and I don't have mine, so I don't know. Like, okay. Yeah. Well, they could have brought it to the Trooper because they could have blocked away from the office. I know. That's true. I know. <laughs> so, but, you know, I'll be back there in a week. Yeah. So what, Friday? Friday, Saturday, I think? Yes. Something like that. Good old LA. Mm. Um, I think that's most of them. Yeah. Um, cool. I guess one, uh, two quick ones. Okay. Um, obviously, you guys have been changing up the set list quite a bit since you're doing three shows here and two shows in LA. Do you think you'll be pulling out some of the songs that are like more or less standards? Um, that you're playing each show just because you have three shows in a row or do you think you'll still kind of keep the set list as they are going right now say this <laughs> at least for the San Diego shows I believe there are only three songs that are in all three of the set lists okay so the set lists are all made already we, more or less more. they could still change yeah a lot who knows and obviously you can't get the one for tonight right. could change and that's only like a couple hours away so yeah <laughs> All right, and then, do you want to do the last question? I've been talking for a while. Well, which which um, one? Yeah, the very last. Yeah, the last one that's printed. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, I guess um, is there any one song or multiple songs that you personally like to play live more often? Uh, personally speaking, I would like to dust off the. Um, What's the name of the intro on Team Sora? It's a Yeah, I think that'd be fun. Uh, but, <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> um, that will take full band agreement. Yeah. I actually haven't even brought it up. I just yeah. sort of thought that would be cool. Um, Fully support. Yeah. Yeah, but, and, you know, that's not yeah. necessarily... Uh, does it mean that it's in the works or anything? But. Yeah, and obviously it would take a lot of uh, <laughs> which I know you guys don't like to do. So... Yeah, it's a fine line. Yeah. I think um, prior to this tour, if you would ask me, like, what like what would be, like, two songs that would be, like, dream songs to play? I mean, it's like, I don't know, out of, out of everything, I, I would say that I maybe in Transmission and maybe Sacrifice Theory, which is just like a... Mouthful of marbles on the on bass, like, but um, but everyone asks me about it all the time, and so I feel like it's okay. It's my duty to like try to like champion this song, uh, and we ended up playing both on this tour, which I didn't think we would because we didn't practice them going into the tour at all. So um, <laughs> that's the other thing we've been practicing yeah. these songs like once and then playing them live. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, sacrifice during what and, and transmission. Oh right, yeah. So it's good. It's fun to learn songs on tour. <laughs> Well, thanks so much for your time, guys. It was great to sit down and interview you again. Yeah.